Hello everybody, today I'm going to discuss how to solve the problems C, D and E from the code for C's rank 634, division 3. In the problem C, we are asked to create two teams with the same size, such that the first team has students with distinct skills, and the second team has students with the same skills. Since the numbers are not too big, we can actually use a frequency array which will tell us how many numbers are equal to a certain i, from 1 to n. Basically, we are going to have two cases. In the given sample, which is 4, 2, 4, 1, 4, 3, 4, we have four distinct numbers, which are 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now we are going to fix the number which will be added in the second team, the team where everybody must have the same kill. Let's say we are going to do this with 4. We have two possible cases. We either bring all of the students with skill equal to 4 in the second team, or we are going to bring them all except for one person. Why does this work? Let's say we are going to bring uh, n-2 students if there are n students with some skill value. Then one of the students with that skill value is going to be used because in the first team, the skills must be distinct. So basically, let's say the count is x for some number. We either bring x minus 1 or bring x. The number of distinct numbers in the first case is going to be this. And in the second case, it's going to be this minus 1. Because we have to reduce the size of the team. Because we don't have anybody with the same skill. Basically, for each uh, value of the frequency array, which is not zero, we are going to check uh, which of the two cases is optimal. Because remember, the teams uh, must have the same size. So we can't have a team with size 3, the team with size 5. Now I'm going to explain this uh, in my implementation. Basically, I kept uh, the frequency array and also the number of distinct elements. Also, for each number from 1 to n, I have kept uh, these two cases, like finding the maximum value of the maximum of each case in order to gain some time. And last but not least, we need to reset the array, but without using memset, because in a format with multiple test cases, memset is not optimal and it will lead to time limit exceeding. Now I'm going to move on to problem D. For problem D, we are asked to modify a correct Sudoku table into an anti-Sudoku table with the definitions given in the problem statement. We are, in order to be able to solve this constructive problem, one of the approaches, and basically the approach I have used in order to solve it, is to consider a smaller Sudoku table which is not exactly a squared 9 times 9 Sudoku table, but more like a 9 times 3 Sudoku table. Basically, it looks like this. We have 9 rows. And 3 columns. Since we take this table from a correct Sudoku table, for each value from 1 to 9, we are going to have in the first, second, and third row uh, columns. It doesn't matter if we have it uh, in some row or another, because in the end, we are going to have them to each row. Let's say we have the values here, here, and here. As you can see, each uh, column has one value equal to x. Then the following construction will work. Let's put a uh, another value in the second uh, Sudoku table here. Let's put another value here. And let's put another value here. As you can see, we managed to bring two values on each column and two values on each row, which is exactly what we were asked to do. Since we can't get more than nine moves, this algorithm is correct, as you can see in my source code. Basically, I have checked for each number equal to 3. You can take 
at each number you want. You can do it with one, two, three, up to nine. It doesn't matter as long as you can implement it like this. Basically, if the column is the first column in the smaller three times three table, we're going to add it to the position two columns at the right. Otherwise, we are just going to add it to the column on the left. There are multiple ways to do it, and it doesn't actually matter as long as the final table will always be correct using such an approach. Now I'm going to move to problem E. For problem E, in this case, I'm going to present only the hard version, since the easier version is just uh, the hard version but with smaller constraints, and the solution is actually similar. I'm going to stick with the problem E2. Basically, in pro this problem, we are asked to find a palindrome with a special form, which is given in the problem statement. And we need to find the maximum length subsequence which respects the following constraints specified in the statement, like this one. Since the value of n is big, we can't use the same approach for, as for the problem uh, E1. In the problem E1, we can literally fix each part and see if it's good, and this will get accepted. However, we must find a smarter approach in this problem. I'm going to take this sample and present uh, it in order to introduce my solution. In this case, we have this sample which is represented by the following array. And my solution is actually like this. For each number from 1 to 200, we are going to keep some array which will tell us how many numbers equal to i we have among the first j numbers. Basically, count of j i is going to be the number of numbers equal to i in j 1 j. And this can be computed in n times 200 complexity uh, by keeping uh, the arrays and doing a, an approach similar to prefix sum. Also, we are going to keep 200 lists with each number from 1 to 200 and the positions where it uh, is present. Like for number 1, we are going to have a number on the position 1, 2, 7, and 8. Or for number 2, 3, 4, and 7, and 6. How are those uh, constructions going to help us? Well, we can basically fix the position of the palindrome uh, on the left side, which should be the same as on the right side. Like, let's say we are going to fix these positions, like the size will be 2. And uh, since we can take each uh, subsequence we want, it is always optimal to take the leftmost element equal to a certain value. Because otherwise, if we don't do it, we can just uh, take even lefter positions and the solution is going to be better. Now, since we fixed the left and the right side, we are going to look in the middle at the longest segment of numbers. Since we again can take a subsequence and not a subarray, we can just check the maximum uh, number of the counter array on the range described by the leftmost and the rightmost palindrome taker. I'm going to move straight forward to the implementation in order to make things easier. Basically, I have constructed the counter array, which tells us how many. Uh, how many numbers are equal to a certain value in range 1 i and we are going to add uh, to the list uh, corresponding to the vi the position i basically for each number from 1 to 200 we are going to fix it as the leftmost part and we are going to fix the size from 1 to n and if the size is bigger uh, the size of the list is bigger than two times the size fixed Two times because we need to fix both the left and the right side with the same length. 
Here we are going to take the leftmost and the rightmost uh, position, like the position at the size minus one and the position at the size of the list minus size. And we are going to look in each of the other 200 lists uh, whether we have the biggest counter or not. The counter is computed similarly to the prefix sum. No need to elaborate here. Last but not least, you are going to print the answer and clean the list and also clean the frequencies which are used in order to compute the answer for the case when we are going to bring just one element. This problem actually turns out to be easier than why may have thought it is. Because the statement suggests it is a hard problem, like with many definitions and constraints, but it actually turns out that this problem has an interesting approach. If you liked watching this video, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, and press the bell button in order to first be the first one to get notifications for the new editorial. Also, you can join the Discord server in order to have even more discussions about competitive programs. Until the next time. Stay safe, stay healthy, good luck and goodbye.